All right, ladies and gents, in today's video, I thought we uh, we needed an intro. So um, I want you to picture uh, that it's been raining a lot like it has been. You're working all week. The rain finally breaks. You decide, hey, I'm going to go out and do some fishing on my day off. It's bright and sunny, nice and warm. The weather's perfect. You get in, you pay your money, you get to the spot, sun comes up, and the water looks like this. Shit. Well, uh, it's not great, but all is not lost. Uh, there are ways to get those fish, and they are feeding even though it's that, in that mucky, muddy water. Uh, so I'll show you uh, all the techniques I use to get on them because it is possible and uh, you can kind of turn uh, lemons into lemonade on days like this. Uh, also stay tuned to the very end of this video right before the outro. I'm doing a waiter review and uh, uh, the good people at Hysia or Hysia who sent me the waiters uh, gave me a discount code. So if you make some purchases you get up to 15% off. So uh, definitely check that out. So let's see what we can do. muddy conditions set a real oh it's a lightning is it really yep Beach him? no you can net him oh. it's a uh, bait and wait there you go yeah i shortened that leader uh -huh. to like two inches and how long was it in the water like yeah, minutes dude, like not long at all yep Clearest part of the water is the bottom. Yeah, that's true. Ah, don't worry about it. Wait, wait, wait for him. I'll tell you when he's ready. Basically, what you're looking for is for them to roll, and and I'll point the nose at at, at you. Okay. Because when you try and net him like that, yeah. you're nowhere near as fast as he is. Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Clearly yeah, and especially like somebody's got a toad on yeah, or yeah. has light line. Yeah. If you hit the net, uh, hit the line with the net, oh. it could be bad. Oh. Or want to get you out to pyramid. Oh. Yeah, you got to just wait. Yeah. See, like he's still not ready. Yeah. Because if you try and scoop him like that, yep. it's a huge gamble. Got it. Man, good call on shorting that beater. Yeah. So they are uh, searching the bottom for food. My leader's long. So he's almost ready. Yep. See how he's starting to go on his yep. side? Yeah. There you go. Dude, that's a nice light, yeah. man. Nice. Very nice. Let's get some more deck. That's a, that's a good size one. And I won't net them. Just try and get your rig back. Is that the first tilapia you caught? Yeah. Yeah, they're fun, huh? Yeah. Feels like a toad trout. That's a little Yeah. That's a big one though. I haven't caught one that big, I don't think. He had a bright red tail too. Yeah. Huh? Oh, don't get in my bait rod. Yeah. 
It's under it, so you're still all right. Oh, come on. <laughs> Alright guys, taking a quick break from the video to, to show you what's going on. Uh, the most important thing uh, to get out of this video is when fishing in, in muddy water like this, it's, it's that muddy and murky, uh, what's the clearest part of the water? The very bottom, right on the bottom. And I have some, uh, some uh, footage of an underwater camera that I threw out in, in all this mud uh, and you can see just that, so take a look. All right, guys, uh, first impressions as the camera settles, it is very bad in here. <laughs> but as the dust settles there, you can see you can see the bottom there. And uh, right here, we got a, got a small largemouth bass, uh, real interested in the camera. But uh, uh, real important to note, you can see the bottom right here. So you can see a few inches around this fish. And uh, also something to note is what is the fish doing? Well, he's on the bottom. So he's probably looking for little baits, just, just smaller scale than what our trout are looking for uh, in that clearer part of the water. So uh, uh, it looks like you have a couple inches of uh, visibility, uh, but that's all we need. Okay, now that we've established uh, that the, the clearest part of the water is the, is the bottom, that's where I suspect all our feeding trout are gonna be. Uh, the, the mud doesn't hurt them uh, uh, when it's like this. So, so they'll, they'll be in all parts of the column, but the ones that are actively looking for food are going to be on the bottom. So that's where we got to target our baits. So uh, uh, let me show you the, the rods and reels I'm using and uh, I'll show you my setups. And uh, uh, you can see exactly how I, I fish these and how I keep those baits right on the bottom. First of all, I'll start with my drop shot rod. Uh, as usual, it's uh, my uh, Katana K5. Uh, the K5 is a, a moderate fast action, which means the, the tips got some stiffness, but also a little bit of whip to it. So there is some softness. Um, I have it paired with a, a, a Daiwa Presso 1000 spinning reel and I have it spooled up with uh, this is the black color Sinister Strand 4 pound uh, all the way up to a double uni knot and then I have a 5 pound uh, Runkle uh, Power Fluoro uh, and I said in the other videos I also use the, uh, the Seaguard Vizex sometimes in 4 pound. Uh, either one works. Uh, the, the other rod for bait and weight is uh, a Daiwa Spinmatic uh, 8 foot rod. Uh, ultralight uh, rod it's it's more of a moderate rod uh, but this is also a, a good rod you can drop shot with even though I use it for bait and wet and these are very uh, reasonably priced and I have it paired with a, a Daiwa Legalis 1000 and it's spooled up with straight uh, Runkle 5 pound uh, power fluoro no leaders no uh, no braid it's just straight uh, power fluoro because uh, I'm using it for a bait application um, so let's uh, let's go to the bench and I will show you the baits and uh, how I'm rigging them. All right guys, going to show you uh, uh, the rigs I've been using out there to, to catch these trout. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, this is very muddy condition so we want to keep our baits as close to the bottom as we possibly can while still keeping them floating and, and keeping them off, especially the, uh, uh, the bait. So first off I'll show you the, the it's the same Carolina rig. I got a, a quarter ounce egg sinker down to uh, one of these clear plastic Carolina keepers. And then uh, I'm using a number 12 mosquito hook. You can also use uh, small treble hooks, 18s, uh, even go as small as 20s. Uh, I typically use an 18 uh, treble hook. Or uh, lots of guys like to use uh, number 10s or number 8s. Uh, it just depends. It's just a preference thing. I've, I've really been into uh, using small hooks lately is all. Uh, and I feel like I get I get better results with uh, with the bait and weight presentations. But the biggest thing with this this Carolina rig is the size of my leader, right there. It's about two inches. So this bait, when it's floating, is is floating right there, just off the bottom. And in in my view, that's going to be the the clearest part of the water. That's where the fish are going to see it, and that's where the fish that are looking for food, they're going to come nose to nose with that with that bait. And uh, uh, like you saw earlier in the video, I, I had success. So um, uh, very simple rig. Uh, one thing to remember with this, as, you all, as I say all the time, the trout are always up close. Uh, in muddy conditions, this is one of those times where they might be out a little bit further because the trout uh, can't see up or, uh, at all, like when we can't see down. So um, they're gonna get confused as far as where they are. They won't go too deep because they'll feel the, the pressure difference change. 
but they may go out further because they don't know uh, uh, that we're out there. They can't see the birds trying to get them or any of these things. So they, they may be a little bit more scattered out. So uh, uh, try different casting distances uh, uh, to see if you can find them because they aren't going to necessarily be right up close to the shore. Um, they may be out, you know, 15, 30 feet um, from the shore, but usually no more further than that. So keep that in mind because that's a big difference in, in how we normally fish. Now the uh, drop shot rig or the double drop shot rigs, the same one I always use. I have a uh, uh, 1 16th ounce uh, drop shot weight and I have about six to eight inches to my first uh, number eight mosquito hook. And then I have uh, a couple more inches, probably about almost two feet to my, uh, my last uh, mosquito hook up to my leader. Uh, the baits I was using out there, this is the one that uh, uh, was working well for me. Uh, it's uh, the black and green uh, Powerball worm that Golden State makes. And then the other one I had on there was uh, this devil tail. It's uh, poison dart frogs, blue and black. And I'll show you how I hook these up. And it's, it's very similar to how you hook the minnows on or the, uh, the mini uh, Spartans. And I just start at the, uh, the top, the fat part of this, this worm here. And I start at one half or the other. I don't put it right in the middle because I want as much hook exposed as possible. So I just slide it through to where it goes up, starts going up around the bend, and I pump, push the, the point of that hook through and push it right against the eye of that hook. So I have maximum uh, hook sticking out of there. And this, uh, this devil tail has lots and lots of action. Now, very important is uh, how we're fishing this a little bit differently uh, because of the muddy conditions. And uh, uh, what you want to do is since the, the clearest part of the water is, is the very bottom, you're only looking at a couple inches, what do we want this rig to do? We want it to lay flat, basically, and move along the bottom. So it gets right in the face of those trout. Um, so what we're going to have to do is keep our rod tip down uh, and in very light bounces and sometimes just, just real, real slow and, and barely bounce it at all. Just so, so this rig is almost flat on the ground, maybe just a half inch off the mud and just slowly moving along. And that's how uh, we're gonna get bit. We gotta get that bait right in front of their face and uh, uh, that's the best chance we're gonna have. All right, now let's get back to the lake and see if we can make anything else happen. Feels like a decent one. That's a tilapia. <laughs> well, I went to uh, uh, Powerball worms, but uh, one's black and green and one's uh, black and blue. Yeah. It's hard to tell what it is. It feels like if it's a trout, it's a pretty decent one. Or is that a bass? Oh, it's a big trout. I need the net. Net, 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 net. Real big trout. Nice. Nice. That's a toad, bro. Yeah, that's Look a good size one. Dude, that's a 10 pounder. No, it can't be what? 10. Look at that thing, dude. He's stubby as hell. Look at how short his tail is. <laughs> All right, let's go up to the truck and uh, just hold the net there. He ain't that big. Seven. Seven? Yeah, he's stubby. Say seven five. That's close enough. All right, ladies and gents, before we get to the outro, I want to take a second to show you the uh, waders I was using out there in uh, most of this video. Uh, the good people at uh, Hesia, or Hysia, I'm not exactly sure how you say it, uh, contacted me and, and sent me out some uh, some waders to try. And uh, these are the waders I got. They are uh, neoprene fishing chest waders, and they retail for about 100 bucks on the site, and they are the, uh, the boot-in waders. 
um, and they're they're very very nice quality. Um, I got uh, size 10. Typically, when you buy boot-in waders, you want to go by the size of your foot. And then, of course, if uh, you're not average size like me, you want to look at the measurements provided on the website to, to make sure that that'll fit. But these uh, these fit me very well. Um, the boots are uh, uh, very high quality. They are uh, 200 gram uh, 3M Thinsulate uh, and, and just feel them. They're super durable and they got good tread on them so they have that anti-slip uh, tread. Um, the uh, the waders themselves are made of uh, neoprene. It's uh, 4.5 millimeter uh, neoprene, 100% waterproof. Um, and they have a uh, unbelievable warranty on these. Like it's 100% no leaks guarantee and uh, it's the life of the waiters so if you uh, you just got to register your product and uh, if you mess them up on accident you don't do something on purpose but you get a tear in them or something wears out or, or, or whatever they will replace them give you a whole new pair but just one time so you can even be walking next to a rock get a tear in them uh, it wasn't necessarily due to the quality of the waiters uh, but they they will still honor that and uh, uh, will give you a brand new set. So uh, that's pretty cool as far as I'm concerned because uh, uh, basically you have, it's like having a free pair of waders and you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> I want to show you some of the, the features that come with these. Uh, it obviously has uh, your nylon chest straps, real durable uh, buckles. Um, they're real uh, easy to operate even with gloves on. Um, Working your way down, there's a nice zippered interior pocket right here. Um, so you gotta put your car keys or something, something you need to keep dry. Uh, this pocket's just made out of nylon. It's not water resistant, I don't believe, but it tucks right into the top of the chest waiter. So um, uh, you can keep your uh, your dry things dry that you need to keep dry. Uh, the coolest thing for a, a, a waiter in this price range is it has one of these hand warmer pockets. And uh, that's something some of my uh, my earlier waders didn't have, and I had to upgrade to a higher end model to get this. But uh, this is awesome that it has this because this, when you're in the cold, um, this is a big deal. You can put an electric hand warmer in here, one of those little uh, chemical activated ones, and uh, uh, it's really nice just to slide your hands in here and take a break and get your hands uh, warm back up, get some feeling back in them. <laughs> and it's got a Velcro pocket right here. It goes behind the hand warmer. It's pretty deep, so you can put a lot of fishing tackle in there. Um, it comes with a belt. I have the belt attached back here, and it's uh, nylon as well. Got the same uh, large, uh, real durable buckles. They're real easy to operate. Um, and like I said, uh, if you watched my waiter video last week, um, this, this belt isn't just for looks. It's a safety feature. It's uh, always wear it in case you go in the water. It'll help give you a couple seconds maybe before these things fill up with water and you can get out and uh, uh, be safe because uh, the, this is a very small uh, uh, low technology piece of equipment but it's extremely important. I noticed on these is they have uh, reinforced knees which is a big deal uh, if you wear waders uh, usually I keep my gear up on the bank when I'm fishing my tackle and I got to take a knee usually to change lures or uh, change bait whatever I'm doing. So it's really nice to have some reinforced knees or, you know, landing a fish in a stream, uh, a lake that's shallow. Uh, it's good to put your knee down and not necessarily have to worry about it. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to show you, uh, what comes in the box is uh, you get some cool little uh, add-ons. You get these uh, uh, bolt-on boot clamps. So what you can do is you can bolt this to a wall and you clamp the boots in upside down like this and uh, it'll, it'll dry your waders out. So if you got space in your garage, this is a really cool deal. Uh, uh, you can just bolt this right to a wall, lock these things in, and it's real easy to dry. Uh, because uh, without these, you gotta find a, a, almost a clothes hanger or something to, to dry these things out. And uh, uh, what else it comes with is uh, a patch kit, which has got some little bits of neoprene in there and a little uh, uh, solvent or, or glue that you would use to, to put it together and instructions how to how to do that and then uh, the most important thing is uh, your lifetime warranty card and it's got a little QR code on here and you just hit that with your phone register your product and uh, these things are good for uh, for life so uh, really really cool deal and as you can see in these uh, these shots uh, I got uh, got out in the water with them got to use them for several hours on, on this day 
uh, uh, and they work great. Uh, didn't, no leaks, uh, I wasn't, uh, uh, they breathed well, um, so I didn't feel all sweaty because these, these are very warm waders. Um, the only drawback, and this isn't the fault of the waders, is I was in Southern California in this day, uh, in the afternoon, it got up to about 60 degrees and I started getting hot in these. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's because these things are designed for a, a colder environment. Uh, so I ended up taking them off because it was, it was just getting warm. It was too warm for waders and I had uh, jeans and thermals on underneath. Uh, uh, so that, that was the only thing, but uh, uh, no fault of, of the, the, the construction or the way these things are made or the way they wear. Um, uh, it's just something to keep in mind when you buy waders like this, uh, especially neoprene waders. Uh, they're designed way more for the cold. So. Uh, keep that in mind. Uh, it's not something that you, you want to wear or, or at least you want to have an alternative uh, to change out of if it gets warm out here in Southern California. <laughs> so another thing uh, uh, really awesome that they've done is uh, they've given a discount code that I can share with all of you. Um, so uh, there will be a link uh, to uh, the Haseo waders in the description of this video. Uh, and I'll put it right down here on the screen. And if you purchase, it doesn't have to be these waders, anything on their site. You can use code CSPANKER and you get 15% off your purchase. So I thought that was a really cool deal. Um, and looking around their site, um, uh, they have all different types of waders, boots, uh, all the type of stuff that we're gonna use. Uh, and they have some, they have stuff uh, that starts out uh, very reasonable, but not expensive at all, all the way up to you know the more expensive, uh, higher quality stuff. So if you wanna uh, get something to just try out to see if you like it, or if you're into it and you want to get something nicer, uh, they have uh, both options for you. Uh, so, so definitely give them a, a look. And if, uh, if you buy something, use code CSMA, you get 15% off. So I uh, can't go wrong with that. All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, uh, I'd like to say it was great times at the lake, but uh, uh, when the water's like this, it usually isn't. Uh, it's a tough day. But uh, like I said earlier, you can make lemons into lemonade. Uh, uh, follow those, those little uh, techniques. Uh, and you'll have a much better shot at uh, getting into some fish. And I have heard stories, uh, several guys that I know that have gone out when the water's like that and, and they've, they've gotten into a really good bite. Uh, the, the trick is finding them and uh, the best place to look is at the bottom, of course, because that's where the clear water's gonna be. Uh, but like I said, uh, in reference to the bait and weight, sometimes they may be out a little bit further than they normally are because uh, uh, I'm sure they're confused as far as exactly where they are in the water because they can't see very well <laughs> either. So um, uh, definitely give it a try. Uh, hopefully it works out and uh, uh, leave me any, any questions or comments if, if uh, you have a better way of doing it or if you've done these things and, and had a really good day, I'd like to hear about it. So with that, if you want any of the uh, Golden State Fishing uh, custom baits I use, uh, Waterland sunglasses or the uh, Katana rods, I have a QR code right up here. Uh, it'll take you to a link tree, which will take you to all those sites. Um, the Katana rods uh, are coming. I get a lot of comments and questions from you guys. Uh, they are being mass produced now. One uh, rod has been decided on that's going to be the Katana. Uh, and, and Esteban says it is, it is gonna be very soon. And when they get here, there will be plenty for everybody. It, it'll, it'll, won't be a waiting list. If you want one, you can just get one. So just, just hang on, they're coming, I promise. With the uh, Waterland sunglasses and the GSF custom baits, there are discount codes. If uh, you uh, type in code CSPANKER with Golden State Fishing, you get 10% off your purchase. And with uh, Waterland, if you uh, uh, use the QR code and follow the hyperlink in the link tree, anything you purchase on that link will give you 15% off. So uh, go check those things out. Uh, they're great products or I wouldn't use them. All right, and with that, uh, uh, not exactly sure where I'm gonna be going next. Uh, I, I do have a pyramid trip uh, coming end of this month. Uh, but uh, there's a whole another round of rain coming. <laughs> so I figured this is a good time for this video. Uh, so we're, we'll see where I go. Uh, uh, I'm gonna try and pick a lake. I probably won't go to the mud hole because it's gonna be pretty socked in for a little bit with that mud. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna try and find a lake that's a little bit clearer and uh, uh, hopefully I get into something and uh, something interesting so I can uh, put it here on the channel. So with that, hope to see you guys out there and uh, tie lines. Uh -huh.